So what is happening in Kaliningrad? You must have heard in the news that Lithuania has decided to put a ban on any kind of good that is going to enter the city of Kaliningrad. First of all, let me show you where is Kaliningrad. It is a city situated on the northeastern side of Poland and southwestern side of Lithuania. This city is part of the Oblast province of Russia. It is the only province of Russia that is located on the far west side and does not have any direct border with other regions of Russia. This Russian province only has a border with Poland and Lithuania. And then there is the Baltic Sea on the western side. Now the next question is why is this region still part of Russia? The reason this place is still part of Russia is because of Joseph Stalin. As you know, he was the head of the former Soviet Union. During World War II, as you may know, Germany was fighting against the Soviet Union. And you also know that Germany lost World War II. So Stalin saw it as an opportunity and gained control of Kaliningrad. The name Kaliningrad itself is German. It also has a seaport, so it was very much an important asset of the Soviet Union during the Stalin era. So if you see, Kaliningrad is basically a German city which was turned into a Soviet city by Stalin under the Potsdam Agreement. The Potsdam Agreement was formed right after the end of the World War II. When Adolf Hitler lost the war in 1945, the United States, the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union, who were also the Allied powers, they decided to break German territories into different parts and occupy them. That is how the former German city of Kaliningrad went into the hands of Joseph Stalin. And even today it remains under the control of Russia. So this is the short story behind how Kaliningrad is still part of Russia. Now that you have some idea about Kaliningrad, now let's try to understand why Lithuania has decided to put a ban on any kind of good that gets inside Kaliningrad from Lithuania through railway transit. As you know, European Union has put a series of sanctions on Russia since the beginning of March. And now Lithuania has decided to follow the European Union sanctions. If you see here, the city of Kaliningrad has a border with Lithuania, which is some 200 kilometers long. The Neyman River forms the natural border between Lithuania and Kaliningrad. In fact, natural boundaries like rivers and mountains usually form borders of states or any countries. As you can see on this map, there are two international roads that connects Kaliningrad and Lithuania. There is a Lithuanian railway station by the name of Kibarte and the other one is here called Pagege railway station. So these are the two points from where Lithuanian railways enter Kaliningrad. On June 18th, the cargo unit of Lithuania State Railway Service announced details of the ban. In fact, the Lithuanian Deputy Foreign Minister Mantas Adominas has mentioned earlier that his ministry was waiting for clarification from the European Commission on applying European sanctions to Kaliningrad cargo transit. That means Lithuania did not put the ban on its own. The European Commission has ordered Lithuania to do so. In fact, these railway lines are not just limited to Lithuania and Kaliningrad. These railway lines connect Moscow to Kaliningrad. And obviously after the Russia-Ukraine war, the Western countries including the United States and European Union would badly want to put restrictions on all kinds of road and railway transits that connects Moscow to Kaliningrad. Plus Lithuania is part of the European Union. So any kind of sanctions the European Union puts on Russia have to be obeyed and implemented in every European Union territory. Presently, the population of Kaliningrad is roughly around a million, 10 lakhs. According to the 2010 Russian census, the majority of the people who live in this region are Russians. That means this announcement by Lithuania is definitely going to cut the supply lines for Russians who live in Kaliningrad. Anton Alikhanov, the governor of the Russian Oblast province, has said that this ban would cover around 50% of the items that Kaliningrad imports. 50% is a lot. That means road and railway transit is blocked. Obviously, European airspace is also blocked for Russian planes. That means air and land are blocked. What else is left? Seaway. As I have said in the beginning, Kaliningrad shares the Baltic Sea. That means there has to be a seaport and the name of that seaport is Kaliningrad Sea Commercial Port. This seaport is an ice-free port on the Baltic Sea. And now after this sanction, even Russia has said that they will now send goods by ship. It will travel from St. Petersburg through the Gulf of Finland, then into the Baltic Sea. After that, it will reach the seaport of Kaliningrad. The sea route is roughly around 1000 kilometers. Let's try to understand the geostrategic importance of Kaliningrad. The Kaliningrad province is of great strategic importance to Russia. 
And this is also the reason why Kaliningrad remained under Moscow's control even after its borders were cut off from the rest of Russia when Lithuania declared independence after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. So the reason this region is very important for Russia is because it is very close to the heart of NATO. I'll tell you what I mean. Currently NATO has battalions in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland. These battalions are controlled and commanded by the United Kingdom, Canada, Germany and the United States respectively. And by the way, they are combat ready forces. After the Russia-Ukraine war this year in February, more NATO battalions were established in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia. So overall, if you see right now, presently there are eight multinational battalions that together form NATO's eastern flank. These battalions have ships, planes and troops. UK and Italy both have one aircraft carrier each patrolling in the North Sea. And then United States, France, even they have their aircraft carrier on the German coast of the Baltic Sea. Poland and Slovakia have the US air defense system which is the Patriot. So as of now, this is what Eastern Europe looks like with all its NATO battle groups. And here is Kaliningrad. Now an interesting thing is that Russia has nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad. It is very close to the Baltic Sea. Even the Lithuanian government is aware of it. And you may be thinking, when did Russia deploy nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad? Have they recently done it due to the Ukraine war? No, Russia has been storing nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad since a long time ago. So Russia knew that one day the West would expand towards the eastern side and ignore the Russian concerns. So keeping that in mind, Russia has been hiding nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad all this while. Russia has nuclear capable Iskander missiles in Kaliningrad. And this becomes an important reason as to why Kaliningrad is of strategic importance to Russia. Even the United States and the European Union countries are aware of this. So you can say that Kaliningrad is a Russian territory that is strategically positioned behind NATO lines. And it is an important key outpost for Russia. For every move NATO has planned, Russia has already planned in advance. That is why you will find that it is not that easy to intimidate Russia. Now because of this Russia-Ukraine war, United States has put sanctions on Russia. European Union has also put sanctions on Russia. And you must be aware that US has stopped purchasing Russian oil back in March itself. And the European Union has also slowly started reducing oil imports from Russia. And that is the reason the cost of oil and gas has gone up all across the world. But the fact of the matter is Europe cannot fully replace gas from its biggest supplier Russia. And since last month, we are also hearing that Russia has slowly started cutting gas supplies to Netherlands, Poland, Denmark, Bulgaria and few other European countries. Earlier this month, Russia also cut gas supply to Germany after they refused to pay Russian rubles. And then last week, gas flow to France from Germany halted after Russia cut the supplies. About 40% of the natural gas consumed in the European Union comes from Russia through pipelines. So Europe cannot fully replace gas from its biggest supplier, Russia. Now Kaliningrad is the headquarter of the Baltic fleet of the Russian Navy. And as I mentioned, this region also has advanced nuclear capable Iskander missiles, which can reach the heart of Europe. Now try to understand this scenario. Russia can strike deep into the heart of Europe. And if NATO decides to strike Kaliningrad, then that would lead to a nuclear war. So Kaliningrad is a strategic region of Russia that gives Russia the edge to put pressure on NATO assets deployed in the region. And as you know, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Slovenia, Romania and Bulgaria, they have banned Russian airlines from their airspaces. And now Russia has no other option but to take a longer route through the Baltic Sea to reach Kaliningrad. And now they have also banned the road as well as railway transit to Kaliningrad. If you pay attention, you will realize what the European Union and America are trying to do. They are trying to isolate this Russian territory which is already so far away from Russia. Even Russia is aware of this. So what Russia has done is, it has positioned tankers carrying liquefied natural gas near Kaliningrad's coastline since the beginning of this year. They also have a floating regasification unit. So all these things clearly tells us that Russia can supply its territory even in case of disruption of gas flow to Europe, no matter whether Russia or Europe initiates the ban. And if you see, it was Europe and America who initiated the ban on Russian oil and gas. And since last month, even Russia has in turn slowly started cutting oil and gas supplies. So as of now, Russia is supplying gas to Kaliningrad through tankers. The United States and European countries are trying their best to isolate Kaliningrad because they know that this place can turn out to be a game changer for Russia. But if you look at the ground situation of Kaliningrad, most businesses in this region depend on imports of raw materials, spare parts and equipment. 
Residents of this region are nervous about the whole political situation and the alarming collapse of the value of the ruble. On top of it, European countries have banned all kinds of road and railway transits. Maybe a week or two after that, the locals will start feeling the economic consequences of these sanctions. On the other hand, Russia has to do everything to keep this place loaded and running. After these sanctions, the road network, rail network to Moscow is shut down. Now everything has to come through the Baltic Sea, which will increase the time as well as the cost. So you see, this geopolitical war is becoming very shrewd. Even Russia is observing how long will the European Union countries last without the Russian oil and gas. And on the other side, the European countries are also observing how long will Russia be able to hold on to this territory. Because if at all Russia loses this territory, then nothing can stop NATO to assert power in its eastern flank. Anyhow, such kind of tactics are also being thought about Kaliningrad by the Western countries. That is why the West is trying to isolate this portion of Russia. And Russia will do everything to not let go this territory from its hands. Because this is the only way Russia can maintain its leverage militarily against the European countries and the United States. So let's see how things will turn out. I'll keep you updated as more information arrives. So that's it then. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.